It's Classic Country 100.1 WGLC. It is music and stuff presented by Eureka Savings Bank. The best place to borrow, the best place to save. I'm Charles. Uh, Easily one of the top five most famous people to come out of Earlville is me. But ahead of me on that list, (laughs) uh, if, if at least by a smidge, is my guest on the phone, uh, author Gary K. Wolf. Good morning to you. Hey, how you doing? Nice to have two uh, two Earlville boys who made good. You e- and me. Yeah, and uh, we all strive to be better every day. Uh, it is the Absolutely. center center of the known universe, as we know. <laughs> the center of the universe. I actually I have a T shirt which has that on it. Earlville, the center of the universe. Exactly. Uh, so it must be. It must be true. You can't put anything on a T-shirt that isn't true. Absolutely. That's the truth. Uh, Of course, uh, Gary K. Wolf, if you're not familiar, uh, author extraordinaire, uh, created a couple of lovable characters that we all know and love, and author of many other books, some science fiction works, and of course, Roger Rabbit, which is uh, sort of the big feather in your hat. Uh, Roger Rabbit, of course, the big success with the Disney films. And you got a new project that you've done. You got another book that's out. And we don't really talk about Roger in that book much. We're talking about somebody else, right? Yes, we are. We are talking about the uh, the person who has probably become... Um, my best-known character, uh, a, a cultural icon, if you will, and that is Jessica Rabbit. Um, you know, Roger is is well known, and Roger is well known to uh, comic buffs and uh, you know a lot of a lot of uh, animation fans. But Jessica Rabbit is known to everybody, mm-hmm. and um, I thought, well, you know, all the books have been about Roger. I thought it was time that Jessica had a book of her own. And I was introduced to Jessica Rabbit at the age of 12, and thank you so very much. Uh, <laughs> um, and let me, let me tell you, whenever I am, I am introduced, whenever I go to any kind of a speech or any uh, convention or anything like that, uh, 15-year-old uh, boys always bow down in homage before me. Mm-hmm. It, is, uh, it is a mark of their esteem for what I've created, yes. You are a god among men in that regard, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so this new book is all about Jessica. A uh, little bit about the book without any spoilers. Uh, what are we going to find out about Jessica in your uh, new novel? Every, everything you've always wanted to know. The, the, the things that I get asked most often by fans uh, are, um, you know, how did Roger and Jessica meet? Um, where do tunes come from in the first place? Where, where do tunes come from? And uh, how did Toontown come to be? Uh, this book answers all those questions. And um, it focuses mainly on Jessica. It's, uh, it's an origin story. It takes Jessica from her humble beginnings uh, as a simple shop girl working for a uh, cut rate toy store takes her uh, and her name is Jessica Krupnik by the way uh, takes her from there through a series of adventures and misadventures uh, and eventually at the by the end of the book she winds up as uh, the Jessica Rabbit we've all come to know and love and um, along the way there are a number of uh, what my editor called "what the hell" moments because <laughs> uh, there there are s- so many things in this book that you're just not going to see coming, and um, I, I it's, as a result, it's hard for me to talk about the book because if I tell you anything about it, I give away a spoiler and I'm going to ruin some of the surprises. Yes. I will tell you two things about the book. Okay, first. First of all, uh, Jessica Krupnik, uh, Jessica Krupnik is human, and she lives in a world where there are no tunes. Tunes do not exist in Jessica Krupnik's world. Um, the second thing is that for people who have seen the movie, uh, they might be expecting this to be a 1940s uh, kind of noir uh, uh, book, but it's not. It, it's set in the present day. And um, it, to me, I, I, as, as Lord High Almighty Potentate of Toontown, I make the rules. And in, <laughs> in, 
is my, in my part of Toontown, uh, tunes are timeless, and Toontown is timeless. Uh, you can you can go back and forth uh, from here to there, and um, you know that's what makes tunes funny. Um, if you think about tunes as being movie actors, you can say, well, they all exist in the here and now. Uh, they made uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit as a 1940s period piece, so that's how that came to be. But it, this this is set in the here and now. And I will give you one other uh, little insight, uh, Sirius, uh, Sirius Business. Sirius is a, an organization um, of super spies, uh, ah. James Bond kinds of people. And uh, they are devoted to capturing criminal masterminds. Ah. Uh, so Jessica Rabbit is recruited to go to work for Sirius. Sounds, and that it, sounds, that sounds serious. <laughs> it, it does sound serious. It can't be too serious because uh, I, I, it's supposed to be funny. I don't know. Um, the, 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 I, I've put I put so many interesting little things in. The, I I'm known I'm known as two things. I'm known as uh, the, the premier American humorist. If you ask Wikipedia, I am the I am the Mark Twain of our era, um, and I'm also known as uh, a a noir detective uh, writer uh, mm-hmm. up there with Dashiell Hammett and uh, you know Mike Hammer and Mickey Spillane and those kind of guys um, and and I I've written that I mean all of my Roger Rabbit books so far have been noir mysteries mm-hmm. uh, the only difference between them and and the Maltese Falcon is that mine all have a talking rabbit in them <laughs> um, so. Um, I've I've got another love, and that's spy novels. I love yeah. spy novels, especially James Bond kind of spy novels. I love yeah. the I love the books and I love the movies, and so this one is actually a spy novel. It, it's a it's a kind of a take on the classic James Bond kind of thing, and um, I'll, I'll give you one example uh, when Jessica is recruited and finally becomes a serious agent. All serious agents wear tuxedos all the time, and I mean all, all the time. They they wear them they wear them when they're working out at the gym. They wear them when they go swimming. Uh, they wear. You, know, tuxedos. you never know when the need arises. You, you never know, and of course, <laughs> Jessica, being being the only woman serious agent, wears very high style, um, very high style. Uh, female tuxedos but gotcha. uh, she, she looks good and the, the thing uh, everybody who's read it I've got I've got 50 uh, beta readers uh, people that I give my books to yeah. in various stages in manuscript to, to see if I'm on the right track and one of the problems that I anticipated this was my pandemic book yeah I wrote this during the pandemic it took me about two and a half years and um uh, you know, I had nothing else to do except sit here in my office and look out the window. So I figured, well, you know, might as well write a story about Jessica. And um, I, I I was a little reluctant to do that because, uh, you know, guy from Roseville writing yeah. about a woman, right? I mean, what do I know about women? Uh, next to nothing. <laughs> so I, I I did not want to portray her as a sex object. Yeah. I did not want to demean her in any way. I did not want to demean her intelligence or uh, her femininity or uh, anything. So I was very careful about that. And uh, the Jessica that I portray in this novel is, I think, what Jessica is, uh, the, the Jessica that everybody knows, if you think about it. She's, she's very self-assured. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's very creative. She's very bright. She's very confident. She's very self-aware, and she's a whole lot better than any of the men she deals with. And, she and knows a lot more. She knows a lot more about what's going on than any of the men she deals with. And there's no doubt and, that she can and, and, command the room. There is no doubt she can command the room, and there is also no doubt that the men she deals with do not take her seriously. Yeah, uh, they uh, they put her down at every at every opportunity, but she always uh, she always rises to the top. Um, this I, new book. I, I gave, I, yeah, I, I gave that to 50, 
50 beta yeah. readers, all women. And uh, I said, you know, be honest with me. Am I, am I in any way, shape, or form demeaning women or demeaning Jessica? And they all yeah. came back and said, oh, my God. They said they, the most common comment was Jessica Rabbit is the kind of woman that I've always wanted to be. Well, there you go. So uh, now I think I, I think I succeeded. The other, uh, the other thing, um, even though I'm regarded as the premier American humorist, uh, I do not think – that I write funny stuff. I yeah. write drop dead serious stuff, but people read it and start laughing. So I don't know what that says about me. Or, uh, <laughs> but uh, you're not you're not aware of your surroundings <laughs> when you're writing. I think that's it. I am, I, I am not, and I'll tell you another story about that too. But um, um, so um, I, I the other comment I got on this one was that it was just. Uh, jaw droppingly funny, yeah. laugh out loud funny. Everybody was saying, "Oh my God, this is the funniest book that you've ever written." Uh, and I, you know, I have to, I have to assume they're right. I don't get it myself, but I have to assume that everybody's right because right. that's what everybody's telling. You me. knew there was magic yeah. when you were when you were hammering away at the keyboard, throwing it out on the page. Uh, the book, Serious yeah, Business, well, yeah. Gary K. Wolf. You're on the phone with us, uh, joining us from uh, Boston. Yes, yes, yeah. from Boston. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah, and um, I will tell you the other um, the other story about, uh, you know, when I write, and I didn't realize this, but apparently when I write, I say what I'm writing. I speak it out loud. Mm -hmm. a and um, I had written a movie script, and um, the, the, uh, the movie script – was supposed to be a PG-13, and I had written it uh, as an R, and the difference between a PG-13 and, mm -hmm. and the R is uh, the number of F-words you yes. can have in the script, <laughs> right? Uh, with a PG-13, you can have one, and with an R, you can have over many. So they told me that uh, it had to be edited to, um, to be PG-13, so I had to take out the F-words. Well, uh, I was uh, I was waiting uh, I was waiting in a, uh, a coffee shop and they they had like a little area where people work you know people write their novels in coffee shops and I was in this little area with like six or eight other people who were all writing novels or doing whatever and I was working on revising my script to take the F words out and all of a sudden I realized one by one these people are leaving. And, and pretty soon I'm the only one left in the room and I didn't understand why. And then my wife said, well, it's because you always, you always speak what you write. So you're sitting there saying, oh, what the F? Oh, F this. Oh, this is no F and good. And, and these people, these, these people think, oh, my God, this is some kind of homicidal. This guy's got Tourette's, you know. You're, wor you're working out how to rephrase a passage, and so you're just dropping the bomb left and right. Well, left and right, and uh, nobody's going to, nobody wants to sit still for that. Um, the other interesting thing about this book is that I think the uh, – fans in general and really anybody who wonders, you know, how can I, how can I make it big in, in whatever kind of thing, you know, uh, what is the road to success? Um, I was looking for a cover design for this book. I, I do my own covers now because I've been uniformly disappointed with the covers that book publishers do. So I do my own covers and uh, I had an idea for what I wanted and the guy that I usually use for my cover design just didn't seem to get it. And so he, uh, he, he kept giving me stuff that was just not right. I, I, was, I was really tossed up about what was going to happen here. And finally, one day, over the transom, uh, on my Facebook page, this, this guy named Andy Prisney sent me a, a sketch. And he said, hey, you know, I did this sketch. And would you post it on your Facebook page? And it was a kind of a Picasso, Matisse, uh, ultra modern look at uh, of, of Jessica. And I, I'm I'm not allowed to use the likeness of Jessica on the cover of my book. I can write about her all I want to, but Disney and Spielberg own what she looks like, and I am required to go to them and request permission if mm -hmm. I want to use her image 
uh, they probably would have given it to me. I don't know. But because this book uh, is an origin story, I did not want to use the Disney, yeah. uh, the Disney Jessica Rabbit. I wanted to use something that connoted Jessica Rabbit, but uh-huh. didn't actually show her the way she is. So this guy, Andy Prisney, sent me this sketch, and he said, hey, what do you think? Would you post this on, my fa- on your Facebook page? And I looked at it, and I, I said, geez, I'll do more than that. I said, I'll, I'll put this on the cover of the book. Yeah. And uh, I said, would you, would you be willing to let me do that? And he said, oh, of course, of course, of course. And I said, well, how much would you charge me? He said, oh, no, no, you can have it free. I'll do it for free. Well, of course, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let him do that. Uh, but uh, it is now on the cover of the book. And uh, he's a very happy guy. Um, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant artist. Little known, brilliant artist. And uh, I think that's a lesson to all fans out there that uh, good things can happen to you if you uh, just happen to be in the right place at the right time and keep plugging away. There you go. Gary K. Wolf joining us on the phone talking about his new book, Jessica Rabbit, Serious Business. You can find it at GaryWolf.com and at all other websites that point to GaryWolf.com. That's for sure. Yeah, you can also, you can also <laughs> get it on uh, you can also get it on Amazon. Um, and uh, if you're a member of Kindle Unlimited, uh, it's free. Oh, I mean, fantastic! It's free. I mean, it can't beat the price. You know? How about that? Is the audio book ready? And if not, uh, do you have somebody in line who could read it out loud for you? <laughs> Well, I, Not that I'm throwing I, my cartoon hat in the ring. <laughs> no, I got it. I think it's going to have to be read. It's going to have to be read by a woman, but uh, I don't, oh, I don't no know fun. what your acting abilities. I don't know what your acting <laughs> abilities are. Um, and all all of my books, all three of my Roger Rabbit novels have just come out as audio books, and they're, they're doing really well. I, uh, and it it's. Um, I, I'm, I'm really tickled that they did that because the the way. I used to handle audio books was if somebody who wanted my, my book as an audio book would call me up and I would read it to them over the phone. And, uh, this way just saves me so much time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, I suspect sooner or later, Jessica rabbit will be an audio book. Um, but, uh, who knows right now it's, it's print. It's uh, Kindle, it's um, paperback and hardcover. And shifting gears, uh, obviously mm-hmm. a very uh, an interesting development in the Roger Rabbit story and history. Uh, Disney Plus came out with a movie in the last week or so, uh, mm-hmm. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, which mm-hmm. is a movie that combines live action with cartoons and... Obviously, the Roger Rabbit references are all over. Uh, first off, I assume... And so is Roger Rabbit. Exactly, hey, as Roger, I was going to say. Roger I, I assume you've seen it, and uh, the Easter eggs all over that movie that reference uh, the, the classic film, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, how does that make you feel now, th- realizing that you know, you've know you had this impact that Toontown still not only lives on, it's it's still a viable touchstone for the entertainment industry. Like, this is, like, those guys sat down and they went, this is what we're going to do, and they literally drew from the the sort of the seeds and the stories that, yeah. that you brought to fruition. Yeah, it, it uh, I think about this a lot, and uh, it's, it's inconceivable to me that when I was a kid back in Earlville, um, you know, my dad ran the pool hall. My mom worked in the school cafeteria. Uh, you know, I, I didn't even know what a writer was. I, I had no idea where books came from. I, I, did, I had no idea. And, and to think that from there now, uh, I created something that is going to far outlive me. Uh, Roger Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit, Eddie Valiant, uh, for sure, Jessica and Roger. Mm-hmm. Uh, will be will be known long after I'm gone. They'll be known for a generation, and um, that's just that's just mind blowing to me. Especially Jessica, because um, Jessica 
has, has just struck a note with so many people. Uh, Jessica is one of the most cosplayed characters at mm-hmm. fan conventions. She is very easy for any kind of woman to cosplay. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, if you're a little buxom, great. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you look great as Jessica Rabbit. If you're a normal woman, fine, you look great as Jessica Rabbit. If and, you're a bit thin, well, a little padding, and you look great as Jessica Rabbit. And she was um, the first, really, if, if you think about how, in regards to Disney anyway, for sure, uh, for the most part, the leading ladies in Disney animated projects... Uh, found themselves more comfortable on fainting couches than wielding a frying yeah. pan. Like they were Absolutely. all they were all yeah. damsels in distress, and they needed to be rescued. Absolutely. And Jessica they Rabbit comes a- along, and you're thinking to yourself. She might have killed somebody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, Disney heroines always needed a good, strong man to to come to their rescue, kiss them, and wake them up, uh, whatever. And Jessica was really the first uh, kind of self actualized female uh, Disney heroine, and. I think Jessica is a character for for one and all. It's an um, it's an attitude even more than a persona. Exactly right. Exactly right. You know, I I I've always said that Jessica Jessica Rabbit is a state of mind, and that's why any woman can cosplay her because she is a state of mind. Um, the the other thing is uh, people send me pictures of uh, their Jessica Rabbit tattoos. <laughs> and I, I, I just I, I get the feeling that Jessica must be tattooed on half the arms of half the sailors in the uh, in, in the Navy because there are just hundreds and hundreds. And um, one interesting thing to me that this just kind of blew me away. My wife and I were at Saratoga Springs in New York because that's where uh, the New York City Ballet uh, summers, and we were seeing the New York City Ballet performance and we were sitting up on the second balcony where we always sit and uh second row and uh, like six young women sat down in front of us and by young i mean uh, mid 30s and uh they were they looked like they were going to a metallica concert I mean, they, <laughs> they were they were tattooed and it, you know semi uh you know, lots of piercings lots of tattoos and i thinking geez i wonder if they know <laughs> maybe they maybe they got the wrong venue. Uh, uh-huh. But the one the one who sat down in front of me put her arm up on the up on the chair uh, up on her seat her seat back, and so I was looking at her arm from where I was. She was right in front of me, and on her arm from shoulder to elbow, she had tattooed Jessica Rabbit. There you go. And it it was Jessica Rabbit wearing a crop top uh, camo uh, shirt and. Uh, camo shorts and holding an M16. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at this, and my wife who was sitting next to me looks at me and says, "You gonna tell her?" <laughs> I said, "I've got to. How can I not?" So I said to her, "You know, I, I said, excuse me, is that Jessica Rabbit?" She says, "Yes, it is." She says, "My name's Jessica, and she's my spirit animal, and I I I feel like I'm just like her and." I just had to have her tattooed on my arm. And I said, well, why the camo and the M16? She said, well, I'm a retired Marine sergeant. <laughs> and so I <laughs> so okay, you know. So uh, I took a picture of, of her tattoo, which she, she said I could do, and I posted it on my Facebook page. And uh, she did. She posted it on her Facebook page. And um, she got all kinds of comments from other Jessicas. Yeah. She said, because she said, oh, he, you know, he sat behind me and he liked my tattoo and he was really nice. And she got all kinds of comments from other Jessicas. She says, oh, yeah, I've met him. I do yoga with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, and I, I think there must be some secret society of Jessicas uh, worldwide. And they all know one another. And they all communicate regularly. And, and I am their uh, I am their god. Well, they, they have a special handshake. We're not supposed to tell you about that, <laughs> but. We're all in the club. <laughs> I, I can't even. I can't I'm actually even just imagine. collecting. I'm just collecting evidence and espionage right now. Uh, I can't imagine. Gary K. Wolf on the phone, author of Serious Business, the newest uh, Roger Rabbit universe book, entirely about Jessica Rabbit and her beginnings. Check it out at his website. Your amazing website is www.garywolf.com and all your stuff can be found there and all the other outlets yep. too now that was your pandemic book 
And I know you, Mm -hmm. after following you on Facebook, and I invite everybody to follow you on Facebook because it's always a great ride. You're probably working on something else because you're always working on something, whether you admit it or not. Your gears are always turning. They've been turning for the last 40 years. (laughs) I can't seem to stop. You know, I really thought by this point I'd be retired, but uh, I'm actually working harder now than I've ever worked in my life. And uh, I just I just don't know. (laughs) I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, Yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple of other other small things going. I got to major i i can't really talk about this one yeah. because it's i'm not the one who has to make the announcement the producers in the studio have to make the announcement but i'm working on a huge live action animated movie uh tunes involved but not uh uh not the roger rabbit universe tunes uh be a roger rabbit level production uh all a list a list actors a list writers a list director uh, and you know that's in the works, but I can't announce that. Awesome, something for you to look forward to. Now uh, I'm also yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, just the uh, the Chip and Dale thing came out again. You can follow, watch that on Disney Plus, and see mm-hmm. Roger in that. And again, the references to other things. If you loved Who Framed Roger Rabbit, uh, in that movie, there's a number of references, including a reference to Jessica. Mm-hmm. Uh, in yeah. that motion picture, yeah. so uh, be sure to check that uh, out too. I, I, I was really kind of surprised that since they used Roger, uh, I would have thought that Jessica would have made a cameo in that too. But uh, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe she's maybe she's buried somewhere. There, it's it's a movie that requires three or four viewings before you can really catch all the jokes. So, oh, know. it it is so layered with so many so many references and things. That that's that's when I saw it. I and I as an Earlville, as an Ervillian, as a fan of Roger Rabbit and a fan of the universe that you created, there was a, a couple of moments where I had like goosebumps that they they pulled this off. It is not dead, so to speak. Like the concept, the idea, it is still going to grow and flourish. And, and oh, that's absolutely. just and that's yeah, just absolutely. and again, as I said, that's just so amazing. That you know, from from the humble cornfields of Earlville. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, um, the the thing is that Earlville and, and that whole the whole Midwest. Uh, I mean, it really it really molded me. Uh, I have I I have a very Midwestern mentality, and you know, I have a moral sense of right and wrong. Um, the good guys always win, the bad guys don't. And, um, I, I think, uh, you know, basically in the Toontown universe, uh, people are kind to one another. And that, that's, that's the way Earlville was when I was growing up. And I, I would like to think that's the way the whole world should be. Gary K. Wolf on the phone with us. New book, Jessica Rabbit, Serious Business. Get it now at GaryWolf.com. Follow him. Uh, yeah, GaryWolf.com. Yes. Yep. Right. Follow yeah. him on uh, mm-hmm. Facebook and get the new book. Get the old books too. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, it was my great pleasure. Uh, always happy to talk to somebody from Earlville, um, the center of the universe, and really the center of my moral being and the center of my heart. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Okay. Take care.